this episode, we're going to look at how you can set up your own mastering style processing chain using only elements available in Cubase. And this is great if you want to optimise your mix for playing out and testing on other sound systems or for sharing with others on social media and the web. So, no door is a replacement for a real mastering engineer, but there's plenty you can do in Cubase to, uh, to help the process. What we've got here is a very simple setup to begin with. We're looking at the, uh, the metering. One of the most important things before you even actually hear any of the audio, just seeing what's going on, get a sense of the peaks. We have lots of different scales we can use. Um, and also the RMS max and peak max. So the average and the peak level, useful for getting an idea of the overall loudness. For more specifics, you've got the loudness meter there as well. So metering, very important. Some people would say, okay, straight away, roll off some of the extreme low end in your mix. You could be very careful. You need a good sound system to be able to hear what's going on with this. Um, you can change the slope and do all kinds of other things you would do with the filters normally in Cubase. Here, let's just be very, very careful about how much we roll off. The inserts, now these are set to come after the channel strip EQ elements. The first thing I've got is the vintage compressor. I'm just nudging a little bit of the peaks off there. I'm not going too crazy. Got a pretty fast attack, very fast release actually on this one as well. We can tweak the release if we want to. Magneto, tape vibes. We're going, we're adding, basically we're adding distortion here, but this is adding a little bit of vibe back into the proceedings. I'm not going too far with that. Multiband compression, one of the easiest things to completely ruin a mix and get things wrong. You can solo the individual bands, finding the bands is an art unto itself. We're using all four bands here. Below 250, the very lowest. 250 to about, I don't know, three, four K, maybe. Not quite as high as that. Um, and we're just looking for just small amounts of compression here. Err on the side of caution, so small changes as you progress through the chain. If you want to add EQ, studio EQ, this could come before anything else if you want it to. Um, I think ideally you want to get the mix right first. So I'm going to leave the EQ off for the time being, but it's there in the chain should we need to use it. Maximizer, well this kind of does it. That's what you'd expect really. It increases the average level quite considerably. Now if we push up the, uh, the optimize setting, you actually get much more of that level coming through. That's going to make something sound better. A, B, check what's going on there. Keep an eye on the, the RMS, uh, the, the average level it to other tracks and see how far you want to go with this. And the brick wall limiter, really just making sure that we don't overload those main outputs. Really you don't want to be, this doesn't really want to be doing anything at all. Um, we use that detect um, intersample clipping as well, uh, just to make sure we're not going to overload or it's not going to potentially overload anything else later on. If you push up the output on the maximizer, you start driving that brick wall limiter into limiting. We're trying to avoid that which we it. So it really doesn't do it much at all. It's just a sort of, kind of safety net there. And then finally we have the UV22 dither. This really you only be using this if you're going, uh, you're actually changing the uh, bit depth. So if you're bouncing out the CD and this is the last thing in the mastering chain you might do that. I think we tend to avoid that for the time being, but nonetheless it's there to use should you need it. Keep an eye back on those meters of course. You've got the metering within the EQ that gives you an overall sense of how the uh, spectrum is looking. That's it with the inserts turned off and on again. So that's a very basic mastering change. Just one way in which you can configure the plugins in Cubase for a mastering type um, workflow. And you may not certainly want to add tape and various other kinds of things, distortions in if you're working on other kinds of music. We're looking to add vibe here, so I quite like the little distortions that it adds to the overall mix. So there's not just one way of creating the perfect mastering chain, but we've showed you the tools in Cubase allow you to optimise your tracks for sharing with other people.